Good day, everybody. We had another day at home yesterday, and now we're back in the truck. We're headed on our way down to Minneapolis area, Minnesota, and we've got a load that's gonna take us from there all the way to Surrey, British Columbia, and then we're coming back here. So it's about a week round trip. Looking forward to it. Thanks for joining us today. Let's let's get trucking. We've got the load behind us. We need to get out there. We're running a little later than I want it to be, but we'll still be okay. So my fuel gelled. Remember we were kind of worried about that? Parking it overnight in the cold weather. It wasn't actually that bad. It was very, very minimal. What happened was some fuel in the fuel lines turned a little waxy and uh, formed what I would call like sort of like a clot. Sort of like a blood clot in a blood vein. It was like a clot in the fuel, fuel lines or like the blood veins of the truck. And that was limiting the amount of fuel that could get to the engine. It wasn't plugging up the fuel filters. It was just not getting through. There was uh, a little crystallized gel, diesel fuel gel stuck in the fuel line. So I was lucky enough, my dad had just gotten home. He came and saved the day. And uh, I was right by his shop and he opened up his shop for me, pulled his truck out into the cold, put my truck into the warmth, warmed it up. We got some Power Service 911, which gets rid of gel, it sort of eats through it, right? We, we put some in the tanks and we also put some in the fuel filter underneath the glass dome up in the front. And we started the truck and let that circulate through the fuel system. And we let the truck warm up for about an hour or two hours or however long it was in there, probably about an hour. And that fixed it. Wherever that clot was, we uh, un unclotted it, got rid of it, and the truck's been running good ever since. It's me a little nervous, but it could have been a lot worse because I didn't even have to change my fuel filters. No wax or no gel had even reached the fuel filter. It was just somewhere along the lines. It was a slight plug, and I couldn't get full power out of my truck. It would still drive, but it was very difficult to get over 60 kilometers an hour or 40 miles an hour bobtailing. So with a trailer, it'd be impossible to go anywhere. So some fuel was getting through. We got her fixed up. Thank God dad had his shop right there. I mean, I was telling Britt and my dad this. I was telling, I tell everybody this. I mean, that is the exact reason why I want my own shop. And we're getting there. We're getting there. Maybe in a year. We'll see. We'll see. This truck is officially 100% mine at this time next year. No payments. So maybe then. Maybe. But either way, we're on our way. We've got to bring this lumber down. Some Americans in Minnesota want some Canadian lumber. I've got it for them. They're counting on me. I'm bringing it down to them. It's just economy two by fours. Uh, I think it's two by four by eights. And then somebody in BC is counting on me to bring them some American glass. So let's not disappoint them. Let's keep this truck running. Let's keep going. Let's have a good week. When I'm filming this, it's, well, it's Sunday actually. So I don't do too much filming on Sundays. Don't really do much editing. But uh, figured I'd touch base with you, let you guys know what's going on. That I gelled up. Back at it. Look at us go. Tearing things up. Do I even have to say it? Do I have to tell you where we're going? What we're doing? And we're just getting our day started here. The sun may be kind of further off in the western sky, but I'm just getting my day started. Where do you think we're going? What do, what do you think I need before I start my day? This is Trucker Josh quiz time. Pop quiz. It's the one thing he needs. You're absolutely right. I can't go any further without my coffee. It's a bit of a stressful morning, stressful day. I need to relax. Get some of this bean to cup. So glad it could have been worse, you know. It could have been worse. I'm 
glad it sort of happened. It happened literally like just around the corner from Dad's shop, and he he had just gotten home and had just messaged me. Turn if possible. Just messaged me asking how it was going, and I was like, well, actually, <laughs> now that you ask, I'm losing power. I think my fuel is starting to uh, plug up my fuel system. Continue on this road for 11 kilometers. Oh, whoa. Why? Where did those potholes come from? Oh, yeah, it's Manitoba. Oh. So I'm going to fill up here first because I want to put some good Canadian fuel in here, which is conditioned a little bit better for cold weather than American fuel. It's sort of like running diesel number one all the time for you Americans. That's all we have up here in the wintertime is just winterized diesel from, I believe it's... Is it October to April or October to March? It's just winter diesel. So maybe that's why it's a little more expensive up here, but that's fine because we have the, the climate and conditions up here that we need it. I think a lot of drivers, when they go down to the US, they forget that their fuel isn't conditioned the same and that their fuel isn't, uh, it, it gels at a lower temperature or higher temperature, different temperature. And uh, they end up having problems. Even me, like I, I did everything I could to prepare for it. It still gave me a bit of problems, but you know, if I hadn't prepared for it, it would have been a lot worse. There's a quick fix now. And thank God my dad's always prepared too and he was right there. <laughs> What's he got, like 30, 40 years trucking experience on me? He's ready for anything. tonight we're on the south side of Minneapolis right now and I got another hour to go yet but we've only stopped for our mandatory breaks nothing extra I only stayed my mandatory half-hour break I, I didn't stop for 31 minutes I stopped for 30 minutes on the button we are in a rush it's gonna be very interesting to see how these next few days play out I really hope that it doesn't take too long to get loaded tomorrow Usually this place where I get loaded at takes, you know, between four to eight hours. It's taken up to 12 hours before to get loaded. So, uh, 
Well, let's hope it's a quick reload and I can get out of there in like four hours. That'd be great. Because I've still got to drive a full day tomorrow after unloading, reloading, and I want to try to get 900 kilometers or like 500 miles, 500 some miles done. It's going to be tough. But, uh, what can I say? We're going to do our best. We're going to get a good sleep tonight because I'm going to need it for tomorrow. Not only do I have to tie down my load, I have to tarp the load. So it takes extra energy. Uh, I'm going to... Excuse me, I'm not tired yet. That yawn just crept up on me. But, uh... We have to push ourselves. I don't know why they gave me such a short amount of time to get to BC. Usually I have plenty of time. I can stop at home on the way if I want to. Now it's like I can barely stop to go to the bathroom. We're going to be in such a rush. When am I going to shower? These next few days are going to be really rushed. Don't worry, I'll find time to shower. But I don't like having to find time to shower. I like just having the time, you know? Up two kilometers, slide right on I-35W South. Absolutely, Karen, great idea. Great idea, I would have done the same thing. All right, so we're at this quick trip. Call it a night here. I think this is the entrance, am I right? That's where the other guy went in, but he parked right there. I hope there's gonna be a parking spot here for us. I'll talk to you guys in the morning, all right? Because uh, I need to find a parking spot and go straight to bed. Got a big day tomorrow. It's gonna feel like a long day, I, I think. Gotta make sure we're good and rested. What's with all this construction stuff going on here? Taking up half the parking lot. Oh dear. Perfect. Nice pull through parking spot. Check this out. Couldn't get any better than that. So I'll show you this load that we're dealing with. This is the lumber that we brought down from Canada. We're going to deliver it here in Wasika, Wasika, Wasaka, Wasika, Minnesota. Just simple economy lumber, cheap stuff, just to get me down here. It's amazing how quickly the weather changes when you travel around. Minus 28 last night. Tonight is zero. So that went from what, like minus 15, minus 20 Fahrenheit, up to 32. Look at this mountain climber I got. He's like a mountain goat. Look at him go. Look at him go. He loves climbing snow hills. It's his favorite thing in the world to do. He just climbs up and just stands up there like a lord, commanding his weasel army. So tomorrow's vlog, we're gonna be pretty busy. Sorry for the wind noise here. I'm trying to keep you guys out of the wind, but it's gonna be a busy day. I gotta drop off these sticks. We gotta run over, pick up the glass, tarp it. That's gonna take a little while. And then we gotta rush. We're gonna try to get a full day of driving behind us yet, or as close to it as we can. So we'll be working the full 14 hours today, I'm pretty sure. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun, but that's gonna be tomorrow's vlog for you. So today was kind of simple, just headed down here to Minnesota. Tomorrow we'll be loading, it'll be a little bit more exciting. I can sort of show you what I'll be taking out to BC. And you can judge me on my tarping job. It'll be fun, yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>